welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we're going to be working with data derived from the AVHRR sensor. And in this session we're going to process some NDVI or Normalized Difference Vegetation Index data produced from the Global Inventory Modeling and Mapping Studies, GIMS, it's basically been processed by NASA. And what you'll have when you download the data is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index from 2006 for the continent of North America. So for example, NA stands for North America, 06 is the year, 2006. And then we have the maximum NDVI every two weeks. So for example, August 15 is from August 1 to the 15th, uh, that first 15 days, so 15A, dot N stands for the satellite, so NOAA 17, and VI is vegetation index, G is the version. So we have it for August, the first two weeks of August, first 15 days of August is 15A, the first 15 days of July is 15A, the next 15 days of July is 15B, etc. So if you go to Windows Explorer, there's documentation on this product in this GIM NDVI doc folder. So for example, the file naming convention. So the first two letters stand for the continent. So in our example, NA will be North America. And then the month, and then 15A would be the days 1 through 15 of the month, 15B would be days 16 to the end of the month. So this would be December, the first 15 days of December. This would be NOAA 16, so that's the satellite. And then VIG is the vegetation index version G. Okay, if we look at this documentation, the data are 8 kilometer pixel size. And the normalized difference vegetation data have been scaled to values ranging from negative 1,000 to a positive 1,000. So water pixels are assigned a flag value of negative 10,000. Okay, so one of the first steps we need to do is extract the high quality pixel values using a flag. So the way the data is packaged, we can extract the flag using this formula. And what we want are all those pixels with a flag equal to, equal to zero. So those pixels with a flag equal to zero have good normalized difference vegetation index values. They're the actual values. They're not retrieved from the average seasonal profile. They're not retrieved from spine interpolation where there's snow. They're not values that are possibly contaminated by snow. They're good clear sky values. So that's the first step. So let's say we have a pixel value of 5242. So 5242, that would give us a flag value of 2, which is NDVI retrieved from spinal interpolation. So we wouldn't want that. So that's our first step is for each composite period, each 15 day period in 2006, we need to compute a flag raster. So to do that, we can use the raster calculator to extract those flags. Okay, so in this example, I had a data frame named 2006, and I added all the rasters from 2006 to that data frame, and then I renamed them to simpler layer names. So we have basically the peak photosynthetic activity would be somewhere between mid-June to mid-August. So we have the last 15 days of June, the first 15 days of July, um, the last 16 days of July, and the first 15 days of August as layers. So for each of these layers, we're going to apply this raster calculator function. So take the NDVI value, take it, use the float function, divide by 10, round down, multiply by 10. 
and that should return flag values ranging from 0 to 6 for each of these rasters. So for example, the last 15 days of July basically create this flag and we'll name it July 15B. And just OK. And then if we look at the pixel values, it ranges from 0 to 6. So we just repeat that process for June, the last 15 days of June. So basically, we put in the raster June 15B, June 15B, and we output flag June 15B, and then OK. And we repeat, repeat that process for each of our composite periods for 2006. OK, so when we're done extracting our flags for each 15-day composite period, we have for each pixel what the flag value is ranging from 0 to 6, and then we also have the normalized difference vegetation index for that composite period. So we could check using the identify tool as an example. So I'll right mouse click and turn all layers off, and then I'll turn on the normalized difference vegetation index and the flag for the last 15 days of June, and then use the identify tool. So then we'll say identify visible layers. So for example, for this layer, it has a flag of zero. It was a clear sky pixel. The NDVI value is 6310. As opposed to this pixel, it has a flag of three. And if you remember, a flag of three was the NDVI was retrieved from spinal spine interpolation, possibly snow, so we don't want to include that in our time series. Um, another example, this is in the ocean, a flag value of zero, but we've got a negative 10,000, so that's basically an NDVI value from water. Another example down in um, this portion, a flag value zero, so we have some pretty good flag values of zero, pretty clear sky conditions except for some of these locations where it's still snow cover. Okay, so that's what we need to do is basically have a flag value for each composite period. Okay, so our next step is to extract those high quality pixels that have a flag value of zero and also the pixels that are vegetated. So we're gonna use a threshold of an NDVI exceeding 2000, which would represent an NDVI of 0.2 if we were scaled from negative 1 to positive 1. So the NDVI has to be above 2000 and the flag has to be equal to 0. And if so, we'll keep that NDVI value for that pixel. So to do that, we'll use the raster calculator. So basically, we're going to use the raster calculator to test conditions. So the first condition is, is the flag equal to zero? If it is, this will become a one. If it's false, this will become a zero. And this pixel for this raster will become zero. We'll multiply that by our second condition. So is the NDVI above 2,000? If that's true, this becomes a one. If that's false, this becomes a zero, and the output for that pixel will become a zero. So the only way we're going to get our NDVI values would be if the flag is equal to zero and the NDVI is greater than 2,000, so 1 times 1 times a pixel NDVI. And we'll do that for each composite period in 2006, and then just OK. So we'll use the identify tool to check our raster calculation. So for example, in an ocean area, we have a good NDVI of zero because the pixel NDVI was less than 2000. So if we go to interior Alaska, we have a good NDVI of 7800 because the flag was zero and our NDVI 
that pixel was above 2000. If we go to a location in Canada, in uh, the Arctic, that's a good NDVI of zero because the NDVI at that location was less than 2000. Okay, so then we have for each 15 day composite period, the good quality pixels that had a flag of zero and they were vegetated, they had an NDVI exceeding 2000. So our final step is for 2006, for these composite periods, for each pixel, give us the maximum NDVI value. So to do that, we'll use the geoprocessing tool called Cell Statistics. Okay, so we use the Cell Statistics geoprocessing tool. Our input rasters are those pixels that had an acceptable NDVI above 2000 and a pixel quality flag of zero from the last 15 days in June, first 15 days of July, last 16 days of July, and first 15 days of August. And we'll output that to our 2006 folder and we'll call it max NDVI 2006.tiff and then just OK. So we can check our results using the identify tool. So for example, for this pixel, the maximum NDVI in 2006 was 7170 and that was from the composite period of June 15B, the last 16 days of July, July 15B, as opposed to this pixel it had a maximum NDVI of 8130, and that was from June 15B, 8130. So it all checks out. Okay, so our final step would be those pixels that have values of zero, we're gonna turn to no data because it's not really an NDVI value of zero. It's simply, um, they were just no data pixels. So we'll screen those out and become no data. So to do that, we'll use a geoprocessing tool called set null. Okay, so we use a set null geoprocessing tool. Our input raster is our maximum NDVI from 2006. And then the question is, is the pixel value equal to zero? And if it is, those pixels become no data. If that question is false, keep the maximum NDVI value for those pixels. And then our output raster will put in the 2006 folder We'll name it max NDVI 2006 underscore no data dot TIFF extension, and then just OK. And you notice from the layer, the lowest pixel value is 2010. So we've basically taken all those pixels that had a value of zero, and there are now no data. And then what we could do is symbolize this raster. So if we go to properties, no data will symbolize as a blue color, and then we'll give it some color ramp. So this will be our color ramp, and we'll invert it and make it a two standard deviation stretch, and then just OK. So there is our maximum DVI for 2006, where the no data pixels are color coded in blue. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you that will lead you to the next video session.